Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Peter Chats. So today I'm going to be talking about my childhood. I grew up broke. Broke, broke, broke. I mean, poor. Could not afford the O or the R. And thank God, my family, we all eventually climbed out of poverty. It wasn't until my late 30s that I heard a pastor talk about the scarcity mindset, the poverty mentality. And it's the feeling that you never have enough. It's the feeling that resources are very scarce and you have to hold on to it really tightly or else it's just gonna fall out of your grasp. Psychologists have noted that poverty can tax your cognitive resources and as a result, it causes self-control failure. If you have to juggle paying rent, paying your groceries, paying your utilities, or paying back debt, everything feels like a lose-lose situation. It's emotionally exhausting and it can negatively impact your self-control. I mean, it sounds like an excuse for not having self-control and, and climbing yourself out of poverty, but I sort of partially agree. I know what it feels like. We didn't have a car, so going to a place that normally would be a 15, 20 minute drive would require extra logistical planning. It would take an hour and a half to two hours of buses, transferring to trains, maybe to, to another bus. But that's exhausting to do one small thing that should be relatively simple if you had a car. But if you don't, it's a logistical nightmare. It takes a lot of your time and it takes a lot of your emotional energy just to accomplish this thing. I mean, spending 40 bucks on a yearbook was a big deal. It was embarrassing to not have the $40 to spend, but $40 is a lot of money if you don't have any money at all. At the same time, saying that poverty, living in poverty, causes you to have less self-control, it's kind of like saying the world's unfair. At some point, you just have to get over it. There's no more excuses. Yes, the world's unfair, but so what? You can't use that excuse for the rest of your life. I used to resent the cards that life dealt me. My parents had a middle school education, they couldn't speak English. I used to have to attend my own parent-teacher conferences. I would sit in the middle of my mom and the teacher and translate whatever the teacher was telling my mom about me to my mom. Just imagine how awkward that was as a kid having to deal with this type of situation. And my friends around me would talk about normal things like going on vacation or visiting their dad at their workplace. But I didn't have any of that to talk about. I had to be silent and I was angry that the universe put me in this position. And I was embarrassed that my life was less than normal. Today I'm not broke, thank God. And I've had enough time to process and reflect on my upbringing and my childhood. Some of the challenges, the lessons, maybe the remnants of growing up in poverty. So I grew up in Queens in the early 1990s. My first apartment in Queens was a basement, two bedroom apartment. Probably three or 400 square feet. Just two small bedrooms and one kitchen and one bathroom. And the rent was $500 a month. My dad was making $900 a month at the time, washing dishes at a Chinese restaurant. Eventually he got promoted and he was making $1,200 a month. We lived there for a couple of years. And then we moved to a three bedroom, one bathroom, first floor apartment a couple of blocks away. That was $900 a month. By that time, my dad was working odd-end jobs, unstable jobs, making $2,000 a month, but it wasn't a stable $2,000 a month. My mom would work in a sweatshop, making $300 a week. She wasn't very good at her job, nor was she very quick. That's why she only made $300 a week. It was the only job she could find. My sister would finish her high school classes, go to the same sweatshop to work alongside my mom. My sister was faster at this, so she would make $2 to $300 a week. Thank God for her, you know. She was nice enough and obedient enough to give everything that she made to help out the family. Over the course of four or five years, while going to high school full time, was working and probably accumulated $40,000 that she gave to my mom and dad. Ultimately, when my sister went to college, she wanted to focus on college full time, which was a wise decision. For well, about a year or two in that three bedroom apartment, my mom that rented out me and my brother's bedroom to an elderly couple who paid $300 a month. My brother and I ended up sleeping on the floor in my parents' room. So I wasn't joking about being poor. My family never owned a car. I wore hand-me-down clothes for my older cousins and I probably did buy my own clothes until I was in 7th or 8th grade. But amazingly, amazingly, my parents, after 7 to 8 years of penny-pinching and working hard and with the help of my sister, we were all able to buy a home for $200,000 somewhere. So it's just an amazing accomplishment, but it did require seven, eight years of just hard, grinding, laboring work and not spending any money at all to do anything. I heard my pastor talk about the scarcity mentality. It made me wonder if I was carrying remnants of it within me. Was I holding too tightly to money? Was I afraid of going broke? Was I afraid to invest? Was I afraid to take good risks? When I end up back in the tiny two bedroom basement, worrying about paying rent, having enough food to eat, just being able to live. And that's not a healthy way to think. It's very limiting and can be very debilitating in progressing in your life and prospering in your life. I realize that there are other aspects of the scarcity mentality that leave remnants even as you grow out of poverty. One of it is cynicism. You grow up being very cynical and skeptical of everything that you see. Basically, you become a hater. If you're broke, you tend to live in areas with high crime rates. So you're always looking over your shoulders. You know, you're always worried that you're going to get mugged or that something bad is going to happen to you. Dignity and shame. You question your own dignity. 
you become ashamed of your condition in life. Even if it's not your fault, you're, you're ashamed that you're in this position and somehow that you're lesser than. You don't believe in yourself. You think that you have to work 150% to get 100% while other people only get to work 80% to get 100%. And you feel like that's okay. You effectively devalue yourself and you devalue your own work. A lack of knowledge and misinformation. You only see surface level things. That's why broke people are spending a huge amount of their income pretending to look rich. We were actually dragging about the shoes that we wore even though we didn't even have a bank account, let alone having a bank account with little money in it. We didn't even have a bank account to begin with. Rushed. Life just feels rushed. And you don't have any time to do anything. So you can only do things that are pragmatic. You don't have time to enjoy things like nature, music, or art. Now the opposite of scarcity is abundance. If you have an abundance mindset, you don't worry about not having enough. You always believe there will be enough. You'll be well taken care of. And it doesn't mean that you need to live in a mansion or drive a luxury car. It just means that you're not afraid of the world collapsing in on you. You're not afraid of the rug being pulled from under your feet. You see win-win situations. You root for people around you that succeed because their success doesn't take away from your success. You have a deep conviction of self-worth and security and a sense of security. So how do you get from scarcity to abundance? It stems from knowing your self-worth and having confidence in yourself. I don't know about you, but I got it from my faith. To hear that I'm created with intrinsic value was a huge revelation to me. And to know that God the Creator is working all things for my good, that's a huge counterattack to any anxiety that would try to attack me. Even if you didn't grow up in poverty, you may still have a scarcity mindset. I pray that you recognize your self-worth. No matter what anyone says, even the thoughts in your own head, you are a very valuable person. You have something meaningful to offer to people around you. Thanks for listening. Take care and God bless. If you like this video, please subscribe, leave a comment. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.